Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship this Lord's Day at the Champion Presbyterian Church. A few announcements before we begin. First and foremost, I would like to introduce our friend and neighbor from the West, uh, the Reverend Michael Smith, who will preach and officiate communion for us this morning. Reverend Mike received his pastoral training at Princeton Seminary. He served as Associate Synod Executive for Indian Ministries in the beginning of his ministry, and in 1985 began serving as pastor at the Shinnecock Presbyterian Church. Honorably retired recently, he now serves as pulpit supply pastor on the East End. So, more more to you. Thanks for being here. Second, there's a correction to the time of the graveside service for Iris Osborne. This afternoon at 1 p.m., family and friends will gather for a graveside service at the Wayne Scott Cemetery. The next door at St. Anne's, Father Jim will lead a special service of prayer, music, and support entitled Solidarity with Ukraine tonight at 5 p.m. If your heart is troubled over this distressing situation, you may join others in the kindling hope, nurture, and prayer for the victims of this heartbreaking disaster. And last, Thursday, May 5th, is the National Day of Prayer. Since 1952, people of all faiths join in prayer on the first Thursday in May. The theme this year is taken from Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, Exalt the Lord who has established us. There are other opportunities if you want to know more about this. Uh, there's a website, nationaldayofprayer.org. Um, certainly we all have prayer concerns and requests, and we know there's much power in corporate prayer. So I would encourage you to look into that. Now let us turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
years, God is claiming you as a beloved servant. Warm to the community that surrounds you. God has given you sisters and brothers to love. Reach out to feed and care and follow where Christ leads. You are forgiven and claimed and sent. Amen. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. 
He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around them, around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. This, this, my friends, this is the word of God. According to the bulletin, it says, uh, time for the young part. And I would imagine that all of us here gathered this morning are young in part. Um, but I've been asked to uh, invite the young ones up to tell them just share
Is who? Tending? Oh, it's just care. It's another word to care for, like to tend for a garden. To take care of. You take care of your, your friend over there, he's going to take care of you. You take care of the two folks here. Take care of mommy and daddy and everybody. That's, that's what we do. We care for one another. We tend one another. They're waiting for you. Teachers waiting for you. Thank you. Good morning. Once again, I bid you good morning. I bid you welcome into the temple of the Almighty. And I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters. A little bit west of here from over the reds. When she when I was introduced and said that uh, I'm honorably retired now. I'm I'm probably working more now than I did when I was quote unquote painfully employed. But it, it's it's indeed an honor and pleasure to join you this morning uh, as we continue our journey through the season of Easter time. Um, this morning, we hear, and actually there are two distinct stories uh, that St. That John shares with us this morning. Um, the first one is where after Jesus has been raised from the dead, he appears to the disciples, and this morning, well, the, and I'm assuming that the pastor, um, Follows the lectionary. So last last Sunday, uh, does anybody remember what the lesson was? Thomas the twin. Thomas the twin. Didymus, yes. The, the, the person who didn't, he, he was absent the first time, and he, he uh, and I asked this question because I was over at that. I was on the north for last Sunday. Uh, and I, I guess, how, how, many, how many of you uh, see a bit of Thomas in you? <laughs> yeah, and, and we're honest, those hands go up, because that's how we are. I mean, we, we want some tangible evidence uh, of, of things around us before we actually believe them. So Thomas wanted to take his finger and poke it in the nail hole, take his hand and put it in the side. And he said, then I'll believe that, that this is the risen Christ. Our faith, and, and I spent 33 years at, at, at Shinnecock, and, and the one question that I always asked, and, and I asked this definition, and after 33 years, we pretty much got it. Um, what's the definition of faith according to uh, the writer of the Hebrews, the book of the Hebrews? 11th chapter, first verse. Faith is, and if I say it, you'll, you say, oh yeah, that's, that's it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Very familiar. The assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you know, when we think about our faith, uh, we go back to Easter Sunday morning. What's the evidence that we have uh, on, on that? Easter, that first Easter morning. The evidence has passed on to us. The empty tomb. Uh, can anybody come up with any other evidence? Basically, the evidence that we have is an empty tomb. And so that's what faith is. It's the assurance of things hoped for. We, we hope and believe that Jesus was raised from death and newness of life, and because he lives, we're promised that we will live also. So it's the assurance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And I, I asked uh, Mr. White to, uh, to play a, a particular hymn because it, for me, it's, it's so meaningful. And it's the one that's, that's printed in the bulletin. You know, I serve a risen Savior. And, and the refrain in that is, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And so that's what our faith is about. It's about our inner feeling, our inner peace. 
peace that comes from knowing that Jesus Christ is indeed my Lord and my Savior. So Jesus appears to the disciples the third time. And after his death and, and, and resurrection, they do what? They return back to their old ways, if you will. Because the majority of them were who? Fishermen, yes. And so they went back to fishing. And then Jesus appears to them and, and uh, you know, they, they don't want to really let on that they're not quite certain who this person is. But they identify him and they, they claim him as Lord and Savior when he does what? He performs a miracle. I heard someone say it. He shares with them, yes. He shares a meal with them. And that's what we're going to do in a little while. We're going to share a meal. And so in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of that meal, they recognize Jesus. And that's how we come to know him. This is called the meal of remembrance, the feast of forgiveness. And we break bread and we share the cup in the presence of our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, I guess, to, to the meat of the sermon, if you will, um, they've broken bread together. They've shared that meal. They understand that that's Jesus. And so Jesus now comes to Peter. And Peter is kind of the, the, the personification of, of the human personality, if you will. Because we all know about Peter. He's capable of great courage, but he's also capable of great cowardice. He's capable of loyalty, but he's also capable of betrayal. I mean, he has all of those human characteristics and qualities that, that, that you and I have as humans. And so Jesus goes to Peter and he asks him this question. He says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter you know, just casually responds, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, Feed my sheep. Jesus asks for the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Jesus says a third time. Something familiar about the third time? <laughs> Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter's exasperated at that point. He says, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus responds, Feed my sheep. That's a challenge to you and I. We, we gather on Sunday mornings to affirm our faith. We gather on Sunday mornings to hear the word of God. We gather on Sunday mornings to interact with our brothers and sisters in the life of the church. And in many churches it says, enter the worship on the back wall posted leave to serve. That's our calling as brothers and sisters of faith. We're called upon to feed the lambs of God. We're called upon to feed the sheep of God. We're cared, called upon to care for our brothers and sisters who walk in a certain way with us. We're, we're, we're called to be there for our neighbors. And we're all familiar with the, with the story of the Good Samaritan. Did somebody, this young man, ask the question, well, who is my neighbor? Anyone whom we meet as we journey along the way is our neighbor. And we have an obligation and responsibility to care for them. 
Jesus uses Peter to, to tell us the way. To show us the way. To show us what it means to be a faithful follower of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's one thing to say, as Peter did, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But if you love the Lord, then you're called upon to actively become involved in the lives of your brothers and sisters who you meet as you journey along the way. James, it's alleged that James was Jesus' brother. And there's a book in the gospel entitled James. And James tells us that faith without works is empty and hollow. And that's what Jesus is teaching Peter. He's telling him, if you love me, then you'll feed my sheep. If you love me, then you'll tend my land. If you love me, then you will go forth into the world and show your faith by random acts of kindness. Now there's this old poem, I guess you call it. It says, I shall pass this way but once. Therefore, any good that I can do, let me do it now. For I shall never pass this way again. That act of faith, feeding the lambs of God, tending the flock. When we step back and we, we think about our faith and we look at the interaction of Jesus in our lives. One of the names that he was known as is the Lamb of God. He was that spotless Lamb who was sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins. But he's also known as the Good Shepherd. The one who cares for each of us the one who loves each of us unconditionally. The one who showers us with amazing grace. And how we respond to that is to go forth into the world and to feed the sheep of God. To go forth into the world and to tend and care for the Lamb. That's how we show Jesus that we do indeed love him. Because love is not some romantic notion. Love is becoming actively engaged in the lives of our brothers and sisters. It's our way of showing God just how much we love him by loving our neighbors even as in Christ Jesus, God has loved us. And to God, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to that great shepherd, be glory and majesty, dominion and authority before all time, now, and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise, if you will, hymn number 387, Save Your Life and Shepherd and Peace. Please stand.
few weeks back, we celebrated Monday Thursday. That was the day that Jesus shared his last earthly meal with his disciples. And one of the things that Jesus reflected upon as he was preparing to leave them and return back home to his Father and our Father who are in heaven, he, he wanted to give them something that they could taste and touch and feel. Something that they could remember him by. And one of the names that, that we celebrate at communion is the meal of remembrance. Because inscribed across many altars are the words, in remembrance of me. It's also the feast of forgiveness. For the cup represents the precious blood of Jesus shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so when we break bread and share this cup, we do so remembering him. Jesus invites all of those who love him, all of those who want to follow him, all of those who wish to serve him to partake of this simple meal. Meal of juice and bread. Simple, ordinary elements which we set aside this day for a special and sacred purpose that we might be nurtured and nourished, refreshed and renewed in God's will and way for each of us, his people. And as we prepare to break the bread and share the cup, let us offer in number 329, break down the bread of life.
claiming sins, disabilities, problems related to aging, problems in relationships, concerns about children. O oh Lord, you know each one. You are aware of the situations we have named and the troubles that stir in our hearts. We think today of these situations. We ask for wisdom and peace only you can bring to the countries, Ukraine, Haiti, Cuba, and many others. May their leaders of these countries realize the inhumanity and enact the hard decisions for the health and welfare of all people. May you guide us to find peace with justice here in Southampton, as well as, many, as well as in many foreign lands. We lift up those at home on this Communion Sunday. Evelyn, Mabel, Mary, Jim, Graham, Ray Mary. We ask for your nurture upon Jean, Noreen, Rene, Ime, and Joanne. We remember the families of Iris, Anita, and, the, and the Dinah, and Dennis, as they contend with their loss. Be close to those for whom we pray, and may the little things we can do to reveal to them your care and your provision. Help us to be a positive influence for your kingdom. We pray for those who daily deal with the problems that confront our world. Those seeking to bring peace where there is conflict, those seeking to bring creation, and be good stewards in relation to our planet. Those ministering to the poor and to the homeless. Those involved in the political process that seek to create a more equi equitable world for us all. In this, be with us as a church here in Virginia. Sustain us and empower us in these ministries we feel called to offer. Draw others to stand alongside of us in your service. When we are discouraged, grant us a vision of possibility. When we are tired, renew our lives through the rhythms of worship and service. When we forget to care, remind us how much we are cared for. That Christ died for us so that we may live for others. May we develop our life together in a way that reflects the love of the one who is the good shepherd and the cornerstone of our faith. As we gather around the table laid with bread and wine this day, we are reminded that you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior because you love this world. He did not come to judge but to offer a new way through his death upon the cross, a way of forgiveness, a way of fellowship, a way marked with service, prayer, and worship. We join our voices to the angel's song.
betrayal. Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you, as often as you eat of it. This do your remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant sealed in my blood, as often as you drink of it, this do in remembrance. shared the bread of life and the cup of the eternal and everlasting cup. And now let us give thanks to God as we offer our prayers and we keep saying eternal God you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us
who brought back up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in all goodness, that you may do his will, and may he work in us that which is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory and honor forever and ever. My friends, this service has ended, our service now begins. Go ye therefore unto creation in peace and in service. Mm -hmm.